Yorkshire edge in front after Hampshire struggle with the bat. Yorkshire took a patient approach to the Aegeus Bowl, which at times helped them hold off some hostile bowling from Hampshire, but Kyle Abbott couldn't be held at bay for too long. Three wickets to the big South African forced the visitors to go back to the drawing board with the score at the end of the day, 197 for 6, Don Best well placed, unbeaten on 45. But he'd quickly lose his partner with no change to the score, Thompson unable to withdraw the bat in time, playing on for 15 off Brad Wheel. New bat Matthew Fisher made sure that Yorkshire would pick up an all-important batting bonus point with a clip through the leg side for three. An edge-off Barker took best to his 50. The mark reached off a patient 90 balls with just four boundaries. But there was a sense Hampshire were on top, and so it proved. Barker round the wicket enticed the drive and removed Bess's middle stump to leave Yorkshire eight down. Fisher and Patterson inched their way towards 250, but before they could get there, they were separated. Fisher out for 17, LBW to Crane. Ben Code faced just one delivery from the spinner, out LBW for a duck, and Yorkshire's innings had come to an abrupt end, 243 all out. The final four wickets had added 46 runs in the morning on day two, and the door had been left ajar for Hampshire to take advantage. They performed well with the ball, Abbott and Will were three apiece, Crane a tad more expensive for his two wickets late in the session, but Hampshire got off to a rocky start. They may have impressed with the ball, but there was just one run on the board when Code removed Ian Holland, LBW for a golden duck, and it got worse. Weatherly had to follow, caught behind off Fisher with no change to the score. And Nick Gubbins couldn't help his side, furious with himself as he watched his edge off Code nestle into the hands of Harry Brook. Hampshire found themselves in trouble at lunch, the score 29 for 3. James Vince ushered in some calm for his side, he and Allsop looking to rebuild after the break, and the pair saw 50 up. Yorkshire kept quiet for the moment. The Hampshire captain was leading the recovery, doing what he did best with some textbook drives through the covers, and he took the value of the fourth wicket to 50 runs. But despite his good work, he wasn't able to make it to 50 himself, out trying to hook Fisher, 49 all he could muster. And as the saying goes, one brings two, and it was Allsop who departed bowled by a best beauty that beat his defences and took the top of off. Dawson and McManus found three figures before the break, but they couldn't stay together either. Dawson out LBW for 11. That left the hosts wobbling into T at 109 for 6, still 134 behind Yorkshire. The collapse continued after the break, Barker next out, gone by way of an edge through to Cola Cadmore off Thompson. Duke did ever so well to see the back of his keeping colleague McManus, caught for seven as he flicked Bess onto his boot and eventually given out by the umpires. And Crane wasn't far behind, fending a short one from Thompson to Lithe. Abbott helped his side to 150 runs, crucially taking the deficit below triple figures and interreleasing some of the scoreboard pressure. But he couldn't get them closer alone, wheel removed by Code for 12, the innings all over on 163, the deficit 80, and the surface at the Aegeus Bowl was once again having its say on proceedings. The Hampshire innings had sputtered and stalled, and started to crumble, first at the top, and then after the departure of Vince. It had proved the old adage that you should never judge a pitch until both sides had batted on it. Some effective bowling from Yorkshire had taken full advantage of the conditions. But they were back in the firing line before the end of the day, and back in a bit of trouble. Another disappointing return from Lithe saw him depart for seven, caught behind off wheel. Cola Cadmore and Hill made sure they'd restore Yorkshire's 100 run lead, the score passed 20 under their stewardship. It was 34 for one when play was brought to a close, that gave the visitors a lead of 114 heading into the penultimate day in Southampton. If the first innings is anything to go by though, this one will be a low scorer and will require someone to grab the match by the scruff of the neck if either side wants to play their way to the win.